Welcome back to Scripps Tech. I'm Phil Torres. Two women, two life journeys. I promise you won't soon forget either. First, meet Melanie, a young woman whose world changed one terrible day. For Annette, illness came much later in life, but also changed her forever. Both women are now confined to wheelchairs. Both are about to show us how they can elevate from disability to stand as tall as they dream. Scripps Tech's Marita Davison met up with Melanie. I'm driving here with my hand control that um, helps me drive my car and steer my car around. And I also have my wheelchair here. Well, I was paralyzed at the age of 20. It, back in August 10th of 2008, I was diagnosed with transverse myelitis kind of swelling in the spinal cord. I did extensive rehab, and I thought, if I do all of this rehab, I'm going to be coming out walking out of here. Yeah. But that wasn't the case. When I was alone and I couldn't get up to go to my bathroom, that's where it set in, like, this is going to be a lifelong journey. Her wheelchair always travels in the passenger seat of her car. It takes her a few minutes to assemble it and report to work as an ambassador program specialist at Exobionics in San Rafael, California. Once inside, she said she becomes a superhero of sorts. Here with the help of clinician Mike Glover, she suits up with a high-tech bionic exoskeleton that takes a page right out of Marvel's Iron Man movies. She may not fly, but the futuristic suits that Exobionics manufactures give her and others who cannot walk a special gift. The ability to once again stand up and take on life, one step at a time. Melanie became an Exo ambassador working with staff to test and fine tune the various devices. And when she's up and out of her wheelchair, that time is priceless to her. We're having a nice, you know, standing up chat. It's it's working in a sense. It's it's for sure. You you don't seem like you're in discomfort at all. No, not at all. And I I love that I get to look at someone in their eyes and have a conversation as we are now, versus sitting and looking up people's noses. And that's not always great. Even with my paralysis being over 10 plus years, any time I get to get in the device always feels great, whether mentally or physically. No, the physical disability is right in front of you. You see it, it's there. You know you have to move, you can't just sit and sulk. But the mental side of it is what's always harder to accept. As in, can I accept not being able to walk again? Are you gonna sit and sulk and not do much with your life where there's so much life to still live? Or are you gonna do something about it? Here at the Exobionics Research Facility, many of the high-tech components of the devices are assembled and tested. Catherine Strasser is the lead tech of medical devices. This is an exoskeleton, much like you would see in nature on you know, a grasshopper or a lobster or something like that, that has a protective outer shell that's helping provide support and everything, as opposed to our skeletons, which are normally on the inside of our body. You know, I'm a biologist, so to me, an exoskeleton provides support and protection to the mm -hmm. body. This does that, but it does more, right? It provides power. Yeah, but the power is really important. So we're replacing the muscle strength that the user may have lost. Maybe they had a stroke, or maybe they have a condition such as multiple sclerosis, where they can't actuate their legs and move a regular gait pattern. Mm -hmm. And so we want to provide that ability. So these motors at the hips and knees are going to work with the user to assist them and allow them to move. And what we're doing here is trying to create the most typical gait pattern or walking pattern as we can that replicates the pattern that's appropriate for her. Okay. When any time there is an injury to your brain or spinal cord, what we want is this repetitive movement or repetitive stepping pattern to help the brain and spinal cord heal. 
While the bionic exoskeletons are primarily used in physical therapy settings, they sometimes make amazing public appearances. 25-year-old Khalil Watson of Richmond, Virginia, was paralyzed nearly seven years ago after being shot in the back and neck. After years of hard work and physical therapy, he vowed to walk at his college graduation. His dream came true this year. Standing tall and walking across the stage, Khalil accepted his diploma to a thunderous ovation, celebrating his remarkable achievement. It's stories. It's their stories that are inspirational. And, you know, this is what gets all of us at EXO excited every day, is how we are impacting people's lives through the use of this amazing life-changing technology. Coming up, confined to a wheelchair, she has a dream. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's gonna bring you forward, and then on three beeps, you're gonna stand, okay? okay. Walking hand in hand with her husband once more. And it's, it's a very, very special moment that I will never forget. When Scripps Tech returns. Welcome back to Scripps Tech. I'm Phil Torres. Annette Hogan was a successful, active businesswoman. Then she received a diagnosis that would change everything. These days, she lives with MS and uses a wheelchair to navigate her world. But there are times when she can defy her illness and once again do the things she loves most. Just being up and, 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 and walking, as you just saw, is, is, is an unbelievable feeling. And it really has changed my outlook on life, yeah? That, oh my gosh, yeah, I can walk in. I never thought I would do this again, even if it is with a machine or with the help of a therapist. See, I'm upright and I'm walking. It has changed my life in so many ways. So dedicated to walking for just 45 minutes each week, Annette endures a four-hour round-trip car ride from her home to the facility where she meets up with her physical therapist, George Kopolov. He fine tunes this high tech device to get it ready for Annette's walk. So these are, this is the chest component, so it keeps them, helps them to stay upright. And this is the uh, shoulder strap component. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's gonna bring you forward, and then on three beeps, you're gonna stand, okay? okay. Okay, and up we go. Perfect, that looks great. Mm -hmm. I feel tall again because I am very tall. <laughs> I feel fantastic, you know. See, when you have a disease like mine, um, you never expect to walk again or to stand again. So it's an unbelievable feeling and you will hear that word unbelievable a lot today. Here's a home video of what many of us take for granted, okay. buying a snack in the cafeteria or walking hand in hand with Michael, her husband of 22 years. And it's, it's a very, very special moment that I will never forget because we never thought that we could just walk to, next to each other hand, hold hands. Maybe this is what this disease teaches you. I have not been any different before this all happened. I took it all for granted. Yeah, and now life has changed. I think that the exobionics, it can really help people like me to enjoy life on a very different level. 